good afternoon everyone i thank dr malay sir for this opportunity and it's a pleasure to be part of his ic uh, which is on basically dme uh, ai versus uh, the manual analog and uh, so i'll be uh, talking on intravitreal injections uh, in dme and dr which one and how much so we know that dr is a common progressive microvascular complication i'm sure you've heard about this and what is dme it's characterized by abnormal accumulation of fluid in the intraretinal and subretinal space and the correlation of diabetes is with uh, it has a correlation with the duration and also with the severity and the visual acuity so we know the biomarkers of dme they are various so, so they can be uh, you know uh, uh, cystoid macular edema and uh, we have to see the retinal thickening and also we have uh, you know some newer biomarkers like drill which is you know disso dissociation of the retinal inner layers and also the integrity of the ellipsoid zone or the isos junction so we all know that there is microvascular damage due to breakdown of inner blood retinal barrier which causes leakage of fluid from the blood vessels and macular edema and hence the importance of vegf and using anti vegf agents for these so what are the deciding targets uh, you know for dme management based on disease progression so dme management aims reduce the amount of macular edema reduce the leakage on ffa reduce the thickening on oct and in to improve or stabilize the vision and this is just an algorithm which you know shows uh, you know how the presence of edema decides the protocol for the management of dme and as i was saying that these are the various uh, you know newer biomarkers uh, you know for uh, you know uh, dme like uh, hyperreflective dots or spots and drill and uh, you know a sub uh, neurosensory detachment and also the ilm uh, isos uh, integrity and also the choroidal thickness in fact choroid is more and more becoming more important and choroidal thickness and not only choroidal thickness but also choroidal vascularity index which i won't go into detail but it is also becoming very important in uh, management of dme so this is how the evolution of uh, dme uh, has happened and i'm sure uh, the earlier speakers have uh, you know gone through this where we just heard uh, ma'am talk about laser and how it is still in some conditions a gold standard for diabetic macular edema but we now have uh, the various uh, vegf inhibitors which are available uh, including the steroid implants which are the flucinolone and the dexamethasone implant but as i will show you in my next few slides how molecules like i don't have any financial disclosure but how molecules like uh, aflibercept score over the other molecules so this is the u retina guidelines for the management of dme and uh, which says that as a consequence of recent rigorous clinical trials laser photocoagulation is no longer recommended for treatment of dme and anti vegf has emerged as first line therapy and aflibercept is the drug of choice for dme in patients with baseline visual acuity below 69 letters another uh, expert guidelines from asia which show that anti vegf therapy should be given as a first line treatment for patients with center involving dme with central visual loss and choice of anti vegf depends on the baseline visual acuity and early intensive anti vegf therapy is important for patients in asia so this is more region specific if you may call it that and this is the evidence based medicine pyramid uh, when making evidence based decisions for patient care it is essential to select the highest level of research design which in we know is basically a systematic uh, you know review is the lowest but uh, you know uh, the higher the randomized control trials are you know uh, quite high up there so in fact systematic review is the highest and uh, the editorials and the case series and case reports are the lowest so the cochrane meta analysis which is supposed to be the highest level of evidence it showed that all efficacy outcomes significantly favor aflibercept over either comparator at year 1 and it also showed that it conferred an advantage of best corrected visual acuity over ranibizumab and bevacizumab at year 1 the pat survey which is again a very uh, you know respected survey in the american society of retina specialists Uh, you know it showed that uh, aflibercept is considered the treatment of choice for new onset dme according to a survey of a recent survey of participants so in india the treatment of naive uh, dme with aflibercept is just coming in not many patients can afford aflibercept but with the patient support program i think things are changing protocol t 
uh, from the DRCRnet.net was a randomized head-to-head -head trial of anti-VEGF treatment for visual impairment due to DME, where it compared two milligrams of eflibercept versus bevacizumab versus ranibizumab. And they, uh, so this was the, you know, the study pattern which was there, but I will just quickly, because of uh, interest, in the interest of time, I will just show you what we found. That it was patient, was therefore, they therefore received approximately six monthly doses, and eflibercept was found, uh, you know, to be better than bevacizumab or ranibizumab at the year one. Initial vision gains with aflibercept were maintained to year two with the need for fewer injections than in year one. And it was associated with rapid and robust anatomic changes that were superior to those observed with both competitors. And it was also maintained through year two, which is the most important thing. So among eyes with persistent DME at week 24, continued anti-VEGF treatment decreased the probability of chronic persistent DME at year two. So intensive anti-VEGF treatment in year one may facilitate a reduced injection burden thereafter. So the basic idea is to hit the DME hard initially, if you want that the number of injections should be less in the years to follow. So we have seen from various analysis, meta-analysis, and from in various forums that they have vouched for eflibercept's superiority for the treatment of DME. The new kid on the block, brolicizumab, is the smallest known active unit of antibody that allows for concentrated molar dosing. We know that it is a short chain fragment and it is a very small molecule compared to the other anti-VEGF agents. So each six milligram injection delivers a 12 fold higher molar dose than aflibercept in the same volume, which has the potential to deliver durable efficacy with less frequent dosing. And it was the first single chain antibody fragment approved for use in ophthalmology. And these are the various studies. I won't go into the details of these studies, which were the Kestrel and Kite. And up to week 52, they have been studied. And the phase three is still ongoing. And they found that uh, brolicizumab was a very useful molecule for treatment of DME. Six milligram was non-inferior to aflibercept in mean change in BCVA at week 52, significant improvements in central subfoveal thickness, higher proportion of patients with fluid resolution. And more than half of these patients were maintained on Q12 week treatment. So that is the most important thing for retina specialists is to how to increase the interval duration between injections because how to reduce the injection burden. Here it says overall brolicizumab had a well tolerated safety profile. So that has been the question mark for brolicizumab which is still not clear and still not totally solved because of the some inflammation issues that were found with brolicizumab. So just a few cases. So high risk PDR in the right eye, moderate NPDR in the left eye. Already this patient had received uh, you know, PRP and various injections, Lucentis, Ilia, Ozodex in the right eye and Lucentis and Ozodex in the left eye and had, you know, CME. And, you know, you, you can see how that after every anti-VEGF injection, uh, you know, it responds, but then the, the swelling comes back. So this was way back in 2016 and 17. In 17, this patient was switched to Ozodex implant, which is a dexamethasone sustained release implant. He does well, but again, uh, you know, that the, the swelling has a tendency to come back. So in 2018, when the patient was seen, the vision was down to 618 again, and, you know, there was a recurrence of the CME. At this point of time, uh, maybe because of, we wanted to rule out tachyphylaxis, patient was put back on Lucentis again, patient responded, had a cataract surgery, and then finally, again, patient started having recurrent CME. At this point of time, we switched the patient to ILEA in 2019. And subsequently, patient did well, but had a few recurrences. But uh, subsequently, we just managed to stabilize the patient on anti-VEGF injections. And eflibercept has this additional uh, longer-term action, so it is more useful than the other uh, you know, agents. And you can see the seesaw effect of anti-VEGF agents here. This was the second case, and uh, in this, uh, the patient had, uh, you know, deranged blood sugars and uh, also had a creatinine of 5.6, which, 
this is which is another thing which we have to remember is the systemic profile because this patient clearly had nephropathy with a urea of 124 and a creatinine of 5.6 had multiple injections initially was stabilized with prp and anti vegf injections but was kind of lost to follow up during covid came back again with recurrent macular edema and was finally stabilized with aflibercept third case uh, was another 70 year old male type 2 diabetes and uh, again had multiple you can see here multiple anti vegf and you know implants and this is uh, you know how the patient progressed over the years uh, you know we used to stabilize with repeat injections and repeat implants but what is important here if you can see here i'll just quickly conclude is the steroid response you can see that this patient turned out to be a steroid responder not after the first ozodex implant but after the i think the second or third implant that there was a steroid response seen in 2017 when patient was again put back to lucentis and finally was stabilized on ilia so this is just to show that you know it's just like cancer chemotherapy we have to keep working with these agents keep switching between agents and you know sometimes uh, you know we get uh, you know the response with the anti vegf sometimes you have to use steroid then again we have to come back so it's a you know never ending process sometimes but i have seen in my experience that eventually after two or three years of regular anti vegf treatment these patients finally stabilize provided their systemic condition is under control so with those words i would like to thank uh, dr malay sir for this opportunity and uh, invite dr ajay who's the next speaker and uh, this is a photograph uh, which i showed in the end was uh, dr abhijat just finished recently his vr fellowship with us and it was a pleasure